okay then uh, we will start the class uh, today yesterday class we are dealing with the chapter 1 and chapter 2 revision right today we are going to do the revision of 3 and 4 chapter uh, so it will be difficult to complete this within time period but we will try to complete as much as possible of the plant kingdom because that's where normally uh, you guys will get confused compared to the animal kingdom right so before we start the class i will take a technical check okay so am i audible clearly and is the blackboard visible properly okay if you are having any problems so check with your internet facility and check your mobile if the problem still persists once go out of the class and join back again and if the problem still not solved then put a message in the group then somebody will be helped out okay uh, good evening good evening to because yep. everyone can hear me properly yes so still so many people has to join it's already five o'clock we will start it no problem i'm ending the poll now everybody can hear me properly okay today we are going to reverse these things first thing we are going to revise the plant kingdom second one is the animal kingdom okay first before we start solving the questions or before we solving the uh, things i have i'm asking a question the question is bentham and hooker gave which kind of the classification natural system of classification artificial system of classification phylogenetic system of classification and cladistic system of the classification i'm launching the poll now you can answer in the poll or click on yes or no, uh, sorry number of p option okay is it a or is it b or is it c or is it d probably this is the most repeated questions we ever solved right so how many times it's repeated almost like four or five times repeated within these three these two chapters only so this is one of the important question okay either about artificial or natural or about the phylogenetic system okay you guys have still 30 seconds left for to answer only 50 percent people are answered yes correct right what about others last 15 seconds left you can still think even though it's easy you can still think okay i'm ending the poll in two seconds yep i'm ending the poll now and i'm sharing the results 81 percent is an option a seven percent b ten percent c and two percent d this is one of the easiest questions right who introduced the artificial system of classification can anybody answer in the chat who introduced the artificial system of classification anybody yes yes correct right aristotle introduced the introduction as in the starting phase then Linnaeus also followed his path only. Okay, you can think about both of those things because Aristotle also divided the animals into anima and anima, all those things. And Linnaeus also gave this similar kind of the thing only. Who gave the natural system of classification? Bentham and Hooker gave the natural system of classification. Phylogenetical, which came later, right? And classic is normally based on the phylogenetic only. And because of considering all this, the correct answer is option a i think you understand that ha huh, correctly pick up right so next another question came that will be what are types of classification okay when you come to the types of the classification there are three types we again discuss this uh, artificial which is given by the linnaeus what it will say it will only consider few morphological character remember it only consider either color of the flower or the type of the plant or color of the blood okay only few characters not all the characters okay and because it's not perfect that's why other persons like bentham and Hooker, the natural system of classification it actually deals with more than one character like uh, with the morphology it also con consider the flower characters right flower morphology plus anatomy and a, a little bit of the how it's develops where it's develop all those things right because of this natural method is like more related to the plants more relative families or related the individuals are grouped together right yes anatomy and morphology correct so later again another one system came that's the phylogenetic system phylogenetic system deals with the evolution 
right evolutionary manner or you can say that evolution of the particular organism we trace it back how this organism developed and we create a date okay then what are the evidences or the what are the supports for this phylogenetic system of classification there are three different types of taxonomies are present right yes anatomy physiology and fossils correct so numerical taxonomy first is the numerical taxonomy it is based on the number of characters right based on number of character or presence of the character or absence of the character number of characters so you can say a leaf is present a leaf is absent and flower is red the flower is not red and flower contain five petals it do not contain five petals right so using the statistical methods we use the statistical method to calculate this that is called as the numerical taxonomy what is cytotaxonomy refers can anybody answer cytotaxonomy yes ha huh, right it consider about the cell and chromosome when we consider the chromosome what it normally considered it consider the number of chromosomes okay number of chromosomes and behavior of the chromosome yes and one minute yep it consider the behavior of the chromosome and also the yes thank you arsha thank you okay uh, so in numerical taxonomy is based on the number of characters and using the statistics cytotaxonomy is based on the chromosome number chromosome behavior and chromosome characters or chromosomes uh, quality you can say the size and all those things okay type you can say okay type we will study in the cy uh, cytology chapter okay yes and what is chemotaxonomy is based on the chemical constituents okay all the different kinds of they will be present different kinds of the chemicals so we already discussed like uh, citric acid uh, sorry not citric acid citrate family or citrus family or rutaceae contain a kind of the uh, aromatic compounds which give a uh, smell right that uh, peculiar citric acid uh, uh, sorry citrus family smell right exactly in the same kind other families also have the similar kind of substances it may be aromatic or it may not be aromatic it may be a phenolic compound okay or it may be a benzic compound but it have certain chemical constant based on that we made the differentiation remember for the numerical taxonomy we need the complete plant or the parts of the plant okay for the cytotaxonomy we need a one cell right a single cell is enough but when to come to the chemotaxonomy we no need any living things even though non living things are yeah, it may be a powder or it may be a piece of bark or piece of leaf all those things are enough okay it may be dead tissues is also enough for making the chemotaxonomy right uh so that's the answer for that question so next question is coming the question is asking write the general characteristic and brief the types of algae okay so when you consider the algae first what are those characters you have to write the first thing you have to write is algae are mostly aquatic why i write it like mostly aquatic because few of them are parasite and symbiotic also you know that right it may be present with the lichen or it may be act as a uh, parasite in the some of the higher plants okay so mostly aquatic okay they are simple and these are thalloid in nature thalloid in nature means it is a simple kind of the or you can say what you can say thalloid means it's a flattened la correct right these are the flattened plant body okay hetero uh, flattened plant body without separation of the root stem or leaves okay you can't differentiate root stem and leaves this is just a flattened plant body okay that's that's very important in algae and all of them are autotrophic you know that right all of them are autotrophic that means they have the chlorophyll they will photosynthesize right yes correct okay ha huh, no differentiation of part so this is also important and next is the this is starts from microscope to the macroscopic scale okay can you give me any example for microscopic algae any algae any algae microscopic algae yes any one example i think you guys remember some of examples right yes chlamydomonas you can take no why we can't take spirulina because spirulina belongs to the which uh, category spirulina belongs to blue green algae right we uh, discussed that in the blue green algae 
Remember, blue green algae are not true algae. Those are actually types of the bacteria, right? Those are cyanobacteria. So you ca we can't consider all the things which comes in are there in here. Okay. So yes, Maulia, check the group. Okay. So you can also take the example of chlorella. Okay. And when come to the macroscopy, you can take the example of the several. Uh, things like calypso, sargassum, uh, all those things will be macroscopic. They're, they're like very large, right? Hundreds of meters they can grow. Yes. So th those scales will be highly differentiated. Okay. And the second thing is very important is algae. When you compare to the algae and mushrooms, there are a lot of differences are there. Okay. Not only single difference. Some are similarities also there. We will see the similarities here. Difference you can say, right? Presence of chlorophyll, absence of chlorophyll and the alert clone body uh, with the cellular nature, but there it will have the hyphen nature. And in the uh, algae, you can find the cellulose cell wall, but in there you can find the continuous cell wall. Okay. All those are differentiations. Okay. So what's the reproduction in algae? How it happens? Okay. Yeah. How it happens? So reproduction happens through the three processes: one vegetative, asexual, and sexual. We already discussed it. Right? Vegetative is not equal to the asexual because in asexual there are different kinds of spores happening. But when compared to the vegetative, a plant body is separated, which gives rise to the only plant body. Okay. So vegetative. Uh, yeah, I already told, right, Gautami? I think you listened. Yep. So, fragmentation meaning what? Yes, correct. Spirogera like. If the plant body is like this, okay, if you are walking on this and you cut this into two pieces, then it will form a new plant and old plant will be remain same. Okay. Here, what happened? Accidental damage or accidental cut made two plant parts, which give rise to a two different plants. Okay. This is called fragmentation. When come to the asexual, it may give rise to a juice spores. So juice spores means, you know, right, flagellated spores. That means these are the motile spores and these are also endogenous origin, which can also produce like this parangia kind of structure. Okay. Yes, motile spores. And it can also produce aplanospores. Okay. Aplanospores. I uh, mention it here again. Aplanospores also present in here. These are non-motile, exactly same like the fungi. Okay. And when come to the sexual kind of reproduction, it also have three types. Isogamous, anisogamous, and dugamous. You know, right? Isogamous, same. That means both the gametes will be similar in size, like this. Okay. Anisogamous means what? Anisogamous one will be smaller and another one will be larger. Right? What is U gametes? U gametes, one will be motel smaller one, that's we call it as the male, and another one is the larger non motel one, that is we call it as the ovum or the female, right? So, three types are there. When you consider this, you can remember the uh, similarities between the algae and here, right? All these reproduction types in algae is exactly like that of the fungi, but in fungi, uh, certain specification is there, right? Like uh, ascospore, basidiospores, or conidia, all those things. But here it's not present. But the asexual types and the gamete production is similar. So this is actually showing the a uh, similarities, a common origin of algae and fungi millions of years ago. When it is in the protista, it had the common origin. Then it divided into all those things. Okay, you can think about it. So common origin. So next is the use of the algae. What's the use of the algae then? Okay. Uh, Okay, isogamous gametes look alike, correct, right? So, correct, Jyoti, isogamous is look, uh, isogamous look alike, yeah. both are same, but anisogamous are different. Who gamas are one is motile, another is completely uh, non motile. Okay, yes, what is ha? Huh? First one is the CO2 fixation, algae fix almost like 50 percent of, of oxygen in the earth. Okay. That much, that much of oxygen it will produce. Yes, these are used as the food. Uh, it may be a different kind of the food, like what used in the Japanese cuisine or what we are using, right? And some of like chlorella are used to produce the tablets. As we talked about the spirulina there in the second chapter, here also same thing, but we take the chlorella to produce the tablets. Okay. This is also protein, protein rich and used in the 
by sorry used by the space travelers okay and next one is the yes these are also used as the medicines okay in the medical medical field okay medical field is also used to obtain several kinds of the uh, different secondary metabolites or metabolites you can say okay yes making for the uh, ice creams all those things used in the agar agar right agar agar producer from which algae can anybody tell which algae produces the agar agar or from which algae we will extract the agar agar yes any any answers it will start from the gene spirulina is type of the cyanobacteria uh, we are not considering that here we are considering the chlorella here okay correct right geranium or gracilaria okay these things we normally extract the agar agar that's also very important agar agar is used to make in jelly and also the ice creams right so all in all those ways we are using these things right uh, probably most of you already eaten right uh, probably you never seen the agar agar but uh, you guys eaten that okay by using different kinds of jelly there's alkan libe just jelly all those things are there right so all those things okay so what is next thing then the things are types of algae remember this chart is highly important okay very very important by completing this only you can complete the all those things okay so we divided uh algae into three classes one is chlorophyce and pheophyce and rhodophyce chlorophyce means what chlorophyll containing or majorly chlorophyll containing which are green algae okay ha ah, correct sir you can also mention sea vegetable yep so chlorophyce will be green algae second thing will be pheophyce pheophyce means brown these are brown algae and rhodophyce these are actually red algae okay three colors are the green brown and red you can also think when green and red you mix together something happen and brown is coming and anyway okay so what's the reason for that color the color is majorly because of the pigments present in that the major pigment present in all of them is chlorophyll a remember chlorophyll a is the definite or chief major pigment okay what's the reason for that wherever photosynthesis is happening in the eukaryote chlorophyll a must be present okay why it should present because it's like a king okay it only can do certain things which others can't do okay so wherever you are mentioning the pigments remember you have to write chlorophyll a here you can think even the pheophyce chlorophyll a is present and in the rhodophyce chlorophyll a is present then what are the other pigments are present chlorophyll chlorophyce contain b pheophyce contain c and rhodophyce contain d you can simply remember this right remember like chlorophyce pheophyce rhodophyce chlorophyll a contain b and pheophyce contain c with addition to a and rhodophyce contain d with addition to the a simple but in pheophyce and rhodophyce apart from that major chlorophyll it also contains some other uh, pigments that will be fucoxanthin which is the one which gives the brown color to that uh, particular uh, algae okay that brown color is majorly due to the presence of the fucoxanthin okay agar agar uh, yeah we are told right agar agar is the a uh, kind of a substances it's a colloidal substances which used to make the ice creams and all the things okay what is a and b in chlorophyll chlorophyll structures is complex okay this is like a, a large kind of the structure and it has the different length of the tail depending upon the length of the tail we created the uh, a b c groups okay chlorophyll a is one group chlorophyll b is different structure chlorophyll c is the different structure of the tail okay when we are doing the class after completion of these things that means revision after completion of your mt we will start doing the this third chapter okay when we are doing the actual chapter we will go in depth and we will see what are all those differences okay yep so and this rhodophyce contain another one called phycoerythrin you can think about it right phyco means algae yes lipika and erythrin means what you already heard erythrocytes that means red blood cells right so erythrin means red okay erythrin are red color substances so this phycoerythrin is red in color which is the one which is actually giving red color to the rhodophyce 
okay so what is the chlorophyll a function then chlorophyll a function is majorly of the photosynthesis and fucoxanthin and phycoerythrin in these things giving the color also apart from helping in the photosynthesis okay yes so what is the stored food then chlorophyll is simple okay chlorophyll is simple starch you already know what is starch but when come to the pheophyll starch is not there instead of starch it have the mannitol and laminarin as the a kind of the stored food material okay that's present in different organisms uh, we don't need that one but remember pheophyll contain mannitol and laminarin as the stored food okay and rhodophyll also starch present but these starch is a little bit different than the other type of the starch okay so ha huh, melopectin and glycogen is also a kind of there but those are present in molecules so we didn't mention it here okay so what happens is chloridian starch starch concentration will be different and arrangement of the molecule will be different based on that we created the different kind of sorry we named the different kinds of the starch in rhodophyll instead of the regular starch it contain a floridian kind of the starch okay a floridian kind of the starch it's different okay but when come to the cell wall one thing you should be uh, remember that b c d does not help for food yes this is not all the chlorophyll a b c uh, d and fucoxanthin phycoerythrin everything is helping for synthesis but chlorophyll a is the uh one which is actually is doing the photosynthesis other pigments are helping the photosynthesis okay don't take tension about that we will learn it in the plant physiology just remember like this are the things okay yes dominant you can say dominant yep uh when come to the cell wall one thing you have to remember that cellulose is the common why it is cellulose is common because we are learning about the plant kingdom all the cells of the plant kingdom contain cellulose cell wall right all the cell wall in the plant kingdom contain cellulose that's the sure okay but when come to the different types of algae the composition may be little bit altered like uh, this pheophysin contain another one carbohydrate called algae okay and when came to the rhodophysin it also have some other kind of uh, uh, what you can say carbohydrate this pectin okay and it also contain polysulfate esters but this is if you forget the polysulfate ester also nobody cares okay must thing you have to write is cellulose and pectin pectin is also present in the higher organisms when we come to the anatomy we will learn that okay but you make a difference between these things chlorophyll c only cellulose pheophyll c chloroplus chloro sorry cellulose plus algae then come to the rhodophyll c cellulose plus pectin okay so make a difference between them okay then we already talked about two spores but how many plasela is present that also matters so remember don't think that how many plasela it may contain it won't matter don't think like that okay sometimes it is hard to differentiate and only looking at the particular uh, types of this uh, plasela we can differentiate the types of the algae okay the first thing is a plasela number okay chlorophyll c contains 2 to 8 plasela all are equal and all are present in the apical region that means near the head region okay tip of that particular cell okay it's present in the tip how many it may be present from the 2 to 8 it may contain 6 it may contain 5 or it may contain 8 number varies okay uh, algin i told you right so algin is the a type of the carbohydrate and pectin is also a type of the carbohydrate okay yes so what's happening here plasela is present in the apical region or in the tip region and all those plasela are equal in size okay all those plasela are equal in size but when come to the pheophyll see only two plasela are present and those are unequal and lateral in size not in the tip region it is present in the sideways okay like this one will be like this and another one will be long like this okay and only two plasela are present when come to the rhodophyll see the plasela are absent okay when the plasela are absent you can't say those are juice spores okay because those do not have any plasela and the only uh, movement happens through the water current okay only happens through the water current that means waves all together will be there right using that but these things do not have any plasela no plasela at all okay then where it is leaving so you can simply think about chlorophyll right in the rainy season you can see everywhere 
yes chlorophyll is majorly fresh water based okay you can see in the pond you can see in the lake you can see in the river you can see in the dams okay in the rainy season all are fresh water okay most of them are chlorophyll they are fresh water very few of them are brackish water what is the meaning of brackish water brackish water is like a intermediate water of the salt water and the fresh water which is present in the estuaries that means where a river will enter to the ocean right way okay it may present in brackish water but few of them are also present in the salt water okay but when come to the fifc the fresh water forms are rare okay very few of them are fresh water one or two examples like that most of them are present in brackish and salt water okay when come to the rhodophyce is also same most of them are remain in the salt water okay most of them are you can find in the oceans okay and but very few of them only you can find in the fresh water things okay so that's why you can't find red color or brown color algae in the rainy season in regular places because these are very rare to find in the fresh water habitat okay so then what are the examples you have to remember try to remember the basic examples like chlorophyce what are the things you will remember chlamydomonas wall walks right and also the eurothrix spiravera all those example and come to the fifc uh, kelps like uh, ectocarpus uh, and you can also write like laminaria sargassum all those things asana do you have any doubt okay when come to the rhodophyce you can go for the uh, what are the basic things so gracilaria and dicelidium okay so those are the two important things that you should remember okay gracilaria and dicelidium so next question came explain the life cycle of bryophytes and drip the types so until the algae we not concentrating about the a uh, kind of the life cycle okay but try to remember in algae life cycle is majorly of the gametophytic phase that means a haploid kind of phase okay where a uh, sporophytic phase is very small phase okay we will see that once again here they are asking about life cycle of the bryophyte so how the life cycle of bryophyte is there okay we will talk about it okay first thing i will start with somewhere here yeah i will start with uh, somewhere here uh, a plant is there okay a plant is there and it is producing a sporophyte on that okay we will simply think about it we will come back it once again it have a sporophyte and this sporophyte is divided into seed and calyptra okay or you can say capsule also this sporophyte is generating the spores with the process of meiosis if you guys remember what is meiosis what is meiosis yeah i explained right brackish water okay so brackish water means where actually estuary is there that is the brackish so what is meiosis can anybody answer yes reductional division right in meiosis two n cell will go rise to the n or you can say it's a reductional division right it's a kind of the reductional division so what happens here this is the diploid sporophyte okay only i'm talking about sporophyte which is reduction division giving the spores what's happening these spores are haploid in nature right remember these spores are haploid in nature because these are haploid in nature they can give rise to either male or they can give rise to female they can't give both the sexes remember because they are haploid in nature okay what's happening these spores are giving rise to a gametophyte wherever i mention the gametophyte remember it is haploid in nature because you know that gametes will be haploid right gametes will be haploid think about this sperm and egg okay simply think about this sperm and egg and you you know that sperm and egg contain only one chrom one chromosomes like one set of one chromosome set not the two set of chromosome right uh, our sperm and egg contains only 23 chromosomes but our body cells contain 46 chromosomes right exactly same condition remember all the gametophytes are haploid in nature okay so they divide mitotically and yes what is the meaning of haploid yesterday we discussed right haploid and diploid uh, so what is haploid means haploid means thing and diploid Sing, simply think about like this okay so how many chromosomes you have you have 46 chromosomes right in your body 
that can be divided into 23 plus 23 because 23 from the father and 23 from the mother, right? If only 23 chromosomes are present, that is called haploid. That means single set. But diploid means two set of chromosomes is there. Okay, haploid means single set of chromosomes. Diploid means two set of chromosomes are present. Okay, I think you understand that. So remember like that only. Okay, remember or simply remember one uh, diagram. Okay, so diagram will be better. Uh, remember if the chromosome is like this, then it is the haploid. Okay, if the chromosome is like this, then it's the diploid. Okay, simple like this. Okay, so what's happened is all these gametophytes are haploid and they will produce the plant body. Okay, when these plant bodies developed, they will start to produce, male plants start to produce the antheridia. Antheridia will give rise to the sperms. Okay, these are the sperm producing structures. We call it as the antheridia. Okay, and this female plant bodies will give the archegonia. Archegonia are what? Archegonia are the egg producing structures. Okay, when the uh, raining is coming, then what happens? This water droplet will uh, drop on this antheridial head. They will be splashed, right? It will be splashed. When it will be splashed, so up, uh, along with that particular raindrop, some of the sperms also travel and they will reach the archegonial head, okay? When it will reach the archegonial head, both of them will fuse and that is process is called fertilization. So what happens in the fertilization? One end from the sperm, and another end from the zygote, sorry, another end from the egg is fused. That means it will form a zygote with the diploid number of the chromosomes or two set of the chromosomes. Okay. When it's deployed, it starts to develop. Okay. Where it's starting to develop, it's starting to develop within the female gametophyte only. Female gametophyte only, what's happening? It started to develop. When it started to develop, it will de develop into a sporophyte, okay? Remember, here it is deployed, right? So wherever I mention the uh, sporophyte, it must be deployed in nature, okay? Remember, so I'm repeating it once again. Before that, I will make you clarify. Haploid means single set of chromosomes. Deployed means two set of chromosomes. Wherever I mention sporophyte, remember, it will be sporophyte only. It may be algae, it may be bryophyte, it may be pteridophyte, it may be gymnosperm, or it may be angiosperm, or it may be humans, whatever. Okay, think like, okay. So always sporophyte will be deployed. And what about gametophyte? I mentioned whenever, okay, it may be algae to the angiosperm. Uh, wherever I mentioned gametophyte, that means those are haploid only. Try to remember that, okay. That's really important. Those are basics, okay. Now we will see this once again, but in a different perspective. As you can see here, this sporophyte is colorless in nature, okay, okay, but it gives the spores, so those spores are haploid in nature, because it's haploid in nature, uh, why it's haploid in nature, because it's going through the process of meiosis, right, so this gives rise to gametophyte, these are haploid in nature, but you can see here, these particular gametophytes are green in color, what is the meaning of green in color? That means these are autotropic. That means they can photosynthesize, right? They can photosynthesize using the sun, sunlight and they can produce its own food, okay? But when it will produce the antheridia and archegonia, these sperms will enter here, right? Fertilization happens. After the fertilization, this particular zygote will not go out. What it will do, it will stay within the female gametophyte and it will start it to develop within the female gametophyte. And remember, this one is brown in color. What is the meaning of brown in color? It do not have any chlorophyll, do not have any chlorophyll, okay? If do not have any chlorophyll means, so from where it is getting the energy? So it is getting the energy from the gametophyte. Remember, it's getting the energy from where? It's getting the energy from the gametophyte. From using the energy from the gametophyte, it is developing. So we can't say one thing, right? So if it is doing like this, then we can say sporophyte is the parasite of the gametophyte. You can say, okay, sporophyte is the parasite of gametophyte. Why? Because that sporophyte is sucking the nutrition from the gametophyte, okay? You can also say another one thing. This sporophyte is 
dependent on the dependent on the gametophyte because if you uh, cut the gametophyte the sporophyte can't survive because it need nutrition which is obtaining it from the gametophyte only correct correct lipica okay so then if you consider this life cycle which one do you think dominant is sporophytic phase is dominant or gametophytic phase is dominant which one do you think is dominant okay so having the more control having the more control what you can say which one is dominant or having more control over the other any answers 71 people sir or more than 70 correct right in this you can simply say gametophyte is dominant gametophyte is dominant because without gametophyte the sporophyte can't survive and gametophyte is present okay and which is the one which is producing the that uh, food and everything okay you want those sporophyte present in the most of the time but what happens gametophyte have the upper hand here okay then what are the types of the bryophyte you know that and next is the bryophyte types is divided into three different classes but we are not going for the anthroceratopsida because these are not included in the cbsc syllabus okay when we are going through the avanti in the chapter then we will learn about it okay so commonly we divide into two types one is the hepaticopsida or liverworts which is having the liver like shape and bryopsida or mosses like moss kind of say okay completely uh, build like this okay hepaticopsida is having the octaloid plant body everything is thyroid in plant body and these have the unicellular rhizoids okay unicellular rhizoids okay yes these are the unicellular rhizoids it have okay so what is the another one character what is the another character can anybody mention can anybody mention what are the types of reproduction it do the fragmentation it do the a uh, kind of another one thing that's called as gamma cup okay it produces the separate kind of the thing that's called gamma cup gamma cups will be like this okay which contain a tablet like cells okay tablet like organization that particular one is called gamma okay that particular one is called gamma gamma means a reproductive structure okay in latin so what it will do it will flow with the water when it will give uh, get a particular proper um, sand or soil and the nutrition and the light everything then this will germinate and it will produce us the a particular type of the plant okay ha huh, somebody is asking what is rhizoids in the higher organism you saw the roots right but in the lower organism we didn't mention anything but in between organism a false kind of the roots are present you can simply think yeah simply think something like uh, rhizoids are non vascular roots vascular ro me roots means our regular roots which contain both xylem and phloem but non vascular roots are the one which do not contain those things okay do not contain anything these are correct correct lipica these are hair like structures these are also help in the or these are function as like the roots okay function as root but it, these are not true roots okay you can simply say it like false root okay hepatic opsida hepatic means liver okay hepatic means liver so you will learn it in the animal physiology also okay so it gave uh, this name came from the uh, type of the liver words okay so uh, those are actually looks like the liver like this okay looks like the liver that's why we gave the name hepatic opsida or liver warts okay yes when you come to the this side those are called uh, bryopsida or mosses mosses contain leaves okay and another one thing is multicellular rhizoids okay multicellular rhizoids so these are the two important differentiation when you come to the here hepatic opsida all are thyroid and unicellular rhizoids but here here okay yes these are multicellular and these are rhizoids okay correct so what happens next so these are the two stages in here one is the protonema stage and another one is the leafy stage okay protonema and leafy stage okay so what is protonema and what is leafy stage once it germinated these gametophytes do not produce the leaves all of a sudden okay what it will do it will produce a thread like structures like this 
this will be highly branched and surrounds as much as cover uh, limes okay after certain time when the condition is good it will start to produce the leaves in all together okay so what is the advantage because of the protonema stage it can uh, cover the more ground than actual place it is okay yes uh, so protonema stage is the starting stage without leaf okay leaf stage is the leaf containing stage okay leaf containing stage okay yes uh, mosses are growing on walls yes mosses are growing on the compounds walls rocks some on the barks of the tree all of them are the mosses only okay correct you the right even though it may be thallophytes or or hepatocopsida or proapsida or anthroceratopsida anthroceratopsida which is not in here all of them need water for fertilization that is the important thing okay all of them need water for fertilization okay fertilization leafy stage develops from the secondary protonema yes so leafy stages is developed from the protonema only that's what we mentioned right it's no issue so we will go to the next one so next they are asking explain the heterospore and seed habit by explaining the life cycle until here we are what we are studying all of these prophets and everywhere yes correct pomika we will mention that and we will go uh, we will go to the next one okay thank you for that so when come to the bryophyte we forgot one more thing to mention so these are actually called as amphibians of plant kingdom amphibians of plant kingdom uh, because these need the water okay these are not independent of water these need the water okay you can observe only bryophytes where water is present even though it may be moss it may be uh hepatocopsida okay it needs the water for its development and especially for the reproduction or the fertilization okay a uh, protonema we explained right protonema is the non leafy stage or the initial stage of the bryophyte generation okay helpful for the ecologic succession with the lichens yes yep yesterday we discussed about it right so next is the explain about heterospore until then what are the spores produced those are homospores that means both spores are similar but when come to the here they are asking about the heterospore that means different kind different kinds of the spores okay and seed habit that means where actually seed formation started okay explain with a life cycle they didn't mentioned where it is remember wherever someone mentioned heterospore you have to remember it starts with the correct it starts with the pteridophyte don't write heterospore in the bryophyte okay uh, heterospore is initiated in the pteridophytes okay if you go in depth you can find some of the bryophyte but we don't mention it in your syllabus okay so pteridophytes what are pteridophytes pteridophytes contain ferns okay you guys are asking from today's right this contains ferns and also the hostels okay hostels so these are like more developed than the bryophytes or mosses you can we can say like that okay so these are the first land plants first land or terrestrial plants with what first terrestrial vascular plants okay vascular plants even though the xylem and phloem not developed like angiosperm and gymnosperm these have a sufficient a good kind of the vascular organizement okay so what's the use of vascular tissues then what's the use of xylem and phloem if one structure contains xylem and phloem it will travel it can grow for little bigger okay when you compare to the bryophyte bryophyte will be very small right it will be few centimeters only right when you compare to the pteridophytes it can grow for several feet or several meters okay that much large it can grow pteridophytes so what are other that things it contain the root yes and it contain stem and it also contain the leaf okay it contain two kinds of the leaves one is the microphyll microphylls are uh, means micro means small right a small kind of the leaf and another one is the megaphyll okay yes megaphyll megaphylls means larger kind of the leaves okay and these leaves are succinate that means these are folded like this okay you can see observe here right all are folded in circular manner those are succinate leaves we will call it as the succinate okay these are also like 
Vascular, we explained, right? Vascular means having xylem plus phloem. Okay, having xylem and also having the phloem. That's called vascular. That means vascular means tubes. Okay, uh, you can simply say it like a uh, tube. Okay, so the xylem and phloem is kind of a tube, right? That's why. Even though pteridophytes can grow little bit away from the water, but these are also dependent on water for fertilization dependent on water for fertilization remember okay these are also need water okay nobody saying it do not need water it also need water for the fertilization processes okay so what are the life cycle here the life cycle uh, take little bit uh, different thing okay what happens in here then so you can think like this most of you seen uh, pteridophyte like in this nature, right? All these leafy stages, ferns, it will probably present in your school or in your home garden or it may be somewhere in the forest, right? All Always you saw the plant like this. This is actually sporophyte. Just make a difference between the bryophyte. What happened in bryophyte? Bryophyte is completely brown in color. But what is happening here? This sporophyte is green in color that means what it can produce its own food okay this also produce a kind of sporangia sporangia means spore containing structure remember here only then we will use the term several times again and again spore containing structure yes correctly because right so and these are spores okay it should be spores and these sporangia contain these spores okay so what happens here you can see this parangia. Then what's the difference between there and here? In this sporangia of there, we already saw in fungi also sporangia, right? There actually it's microscopic in nature. In here, it little bit macroscopic in nature. Okay. Here also this sporangia, inside the sporangia, they will undergo the process of meiosis. That means reductional division. What happens in reductional division? the cells which have the diploid kind of the things which convert into haploid thing right and they will release all the spores and these spores travel along with the water or with the wind okay and when it will give the uh, get the suitable substratum it will give rise to the particular kind of the gametophyte here remember this gametophyte also green in color that means here, both are independent for producing the food. Remember, no one is dependent upon the other, okay? But can anybody say, what is the gender of this particular gametophyte? Is it male or is it female? Or is it contain both kind of sexes? What do you guys think? It, do you think both? Why you get that particular assumptions? Why you guys get assumptions? Like, is it male or is it female or is, is it both? What's the reason behind that? Can anybody answer? Yes. Yes. Uh, remember, here only we mentioned this, right? Here only we mentioned meiosis is happening. Meiosis happening means this spores will be haploid in nature, right? These are haploid in nature. Remember, when haploid in nature means it contain either any one of these sex, okay? Either it may be male or it may be female. There is some problem in this particular diagram. No issue, okay? I will make the diagram into two parts. Think like this is one uh, different plant. This is another different plant. Okay. Some of the plants will be male in nature and some of the plant will be female in nature. The who have the, sorry, I uh, made ulta, right? This will be female and this will be male. Who are, uh, or plants which is having the male nature will produce us the what? Those will produce us the antheridium which produce the anthrozoids or you can simply call it as the sperm, okay? Anthrozoids or you can simply call sperms, okay? And those are modern, maybe. And female things produce the archegonia. Archegonia is a sac-like or pouch-like structure within the egg is present, okay? When both of them fuse, it will make a fertilization and form the zygote. And you can think zygote will be deployed in nature. Always, always zygote will be deployed in nature, okay? Remember, after the zygote, the sporophyte started to develop. Where it's developing? It's developing on the gametophyte only. Can I say it's dependent? No, I can't say because 
this sporophyte is green in color it is green in color means it's not depending upon the gametophyte then why it is growing on the gametophyte because the female gametophyte contain that particular egg and the egg only converted into zygote there is no way to zygote to go out of that gametophytic phase that's why it is still being in here only okay and this particular sporophyte giving rise to the a uh, new sporophyte a larger sporophyte okay cycle continuous okay in both of these cycles as you can see in the uh, you can think about bryophyte cycle or in the pteridophyte cycle what is happening life cycle can be divided into two different kinds right one as the cycle one where the cycle where diploid condition is going on diploid condition or twin condition is going on in cycle in where haploid condition is going on or n condition is going on so what is happening every life cycle having two generations one is the haploid generation next will be diploid generation that next uh, diploid generation will give is haploid haploid give rise diploid so this is called as the alternation of generation alternation of generation means what's happening generation or alternating each other haploid and diploid generations are alternating which is present in all the kinds of plants remember okay when you make difference about the bryophyte and pteridophyte remember in pteridophytes both of these are actually uh, independent of each other we will use one term here okay when we are talking about the pteridophyte we will use a term that is called prothallus okay you can ask what is the prothallus prothallus is actually gametophyte stage or you can simply say gametophytic stage in the pteridophyte gametophytic stage in pteridophyte it is called as the prothallus okay remember this word this word is very important okay as protonema is important in bryophyte prothallus is important in the uh, pteridophyte but remember in here both of them are chlorophyllous in nature that's really important okay next heterospore and seed hobbit what is heterospore heterospore we are already discussed right hetero means two and spore means producing spore containing structures so what happens in certain kind of the pteridophytes it will produce a kind of things okay kind of things a cones i can see like this okay kind of cones like this so what happens with cones what happens this particular cones i will write one minute right cones will be like this it contains two different kinds of spores one spores will be small like this okay one spores will be small like this okay you can uh, write like this okay several hundreds of spores are present okay and other kinds of spores actually larger in nature only one in nature okay only one in nature so there are two kinds of spores will be present right yes yes ha huh, i will i will, after the uh, heterospore i will explain okay so what happens these smaller spores we call it as the microspore okay microspore and this larger spore we call it as the megaspore okay larger spore we call it as the megaspore how we nominated is we named this microspores are like a male kind of the spores and megaspores like the female kind of the spores okay simply named it it is like a similar to the top the what happening in the higher organisms right sperm will be moving and uh, egg will be remaining in there only exactly same kind here what happens those microspores will be travel okay those microspores will be travel and they will travel from here to the here and when it will reach here it will fertilize this particular megaspore which actually generate into the a complete zygote which give rise to the a complete zygote okay so how it will travel then what is the media for traveling is it travel to the wind or is it travel to the any insects no here is also the traveling media or fertilization media is water only okay things will be water only yes sachin uh, is it microscopic you are asking these microspore and megaspore structure containing structures we call them as the cone 
these cones are not microscopic these are macroscopic only but you, when you go to the spores so those spores are microscopic in nature okay so uh, uh, we can't say like heavily microscopic it's not small like uh, uh, bacteria these are small but not small as the bacteria this is uh, same small as the ovule and pollen grain in the higher organisms like uh, uh, plants higher plants okay so that is called heterospore then what heterospore leads what is the importance of that when it traveled from here to here and it fertilized this and made a zygote this megaspore never went outside of there but what it did it remained here and acted as a seed okay i can't see the word seed because it's not a seed okay but what happened here it act like a seed okay so that is called as the seed habit okay so what is the heterosporian seed habit i will repeat it once again so all the lower plants created similar kinds of spores but when come to the pteridophyte it created two kinds of spore one is a smaller in size another is the larger in size smaller size we call it as the microspores or representing the male and larger we call it as the megaspore that is called as the heterospore and because of the difference in size that microspores are travel and reach the megaspore and they fertilize that and it make a, a particular zygote it act like the seeds in the higher plants or after evolving of this heterospore which give rise to the a uh, seeds in the angiosperms which give rise to seeds in angio and gymnosperms okay how higher organisms or higher plants give the, sorry higher plants get the seed because of the changes which happened in the pteridophytes okay remember this question is very 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 important okay most of the times they will ask either explain heterospore and seed habit or they will ask what is seed habit or what is heterospore okay i think you understand that remember this okay okay medium may be water only but the uh, issues happening is here comparatively different than the uh, fight okay then sec, another question came question number 5 they are asking explain the pollination process in gymnosperm what is pollination pollination means traveling or transfer of pollen grain okay transfer of pollen grain where pollen grains are produced pollen grains are considered as the a male gametes right pollen grains are the male gametes that means gametes which containing the male character chromosomes right so those are present in, sorry we can't say like that these are the male gametes you can simply say right so these are transfer the uh, transfer of pollen grains are called pollination and they are asking how it happens okay before we think about that we will think about a uh, little bit about the gymnosperms where gymnosperms comes gymnosperms comes under the spermatophyta okay spermatophyta what is the meaning of spermatophyta sperma means seed okay phyta means plant as you can see it is just representing the a seed producing plant in spermatophyta gymnosperm and gymnosperm both will come okay and in this gymnosperms means naked seeds okay gymna means naked sperms or sperma means seeds right so what they are saying these seeds are naked these do not contain any fruit okay in angiosperms what happens if you take a mango fruit seeds is covered with a fruit right but nothing happens here okay yes ovules are not covered or ovules are not enclosed within a ovary okay ovary which give rise to fruit but it is not happening in the gymnosperms okay most of them are actually these are the first actually a terrestrial kind of the plants because these are completely independent of the water okay they need the water only for a daily process not for the fertilization why because these have the pollen grains okay these have the pollen grains these pollen grains containing organisms are called siphonogamous okay siphonogamous what is the meaning of siphonogamous siphonogamous means pollen producing structures or what happened to the ovary is there who told ovary is not there ovary is there we are not a uh, uh, here what is happening the outer side ovary will be not present in that seeds okay we are not talking about there we are 
until here also we didn't uh, talk about a ovary we only talking about the archegonia right archegonia and ovary will be different archegonia is act like a covering cover but ovary it act like a cover for both the ovule and also for the seed okay it will be differentiated kind of the archegonia so here there is no ovary present that's why there is no fruit coverings okay so these are pollen grain containing structure that's why called as the siphonogamous then how this pollen grains or pollination happens through the air current through the air current if it happens like that what's the name of that what is the type of the pollination which happens through the air can anybody answer anybody answer yes easy right something correct anemophilus right anemophilus kind of the uh, uh what you can say pollination which is happening in here in gymnosperms okay some of this gymnosperms exactly like cycas contain a different kind of root apart from the regular root that's called as corolloid root okay corolloid root what is this corolloid roots then these corolloid root are a symbiotic association with the nitrogen fixing algae or cyanobacteria symbiotic uh, with the nitrogen fixing yes nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria okay so those kind of those kind of roots are called as the corolloid roots okay as you can see here i'm changing color as you can see here these roots are like curly curly in nature the sort of corolloid roots they made a section here and you can see a, a dark color patch or circle right these are actually where those cyanobacteria are present and these are present in this region not within the soil these are present above the soil okay these corolloid roots present above the soil okay try to remember that it also have the regular roots okay regular roots will help in the absorption of minerals and new uh, water but corolloid roots help in the uh, obtaining the nitrogen okay those are the important things when we go to the structure as you can see here these do not contain flowers instead they contain what they contain the structures called cones or you can also call it as the strobili okay strobili so you, you can see here right this is strobili or you can also call it as the cone okay what is the strobili what is that cone okay those are actually uh, spore producing structures okay spore producing structure if i take a test of that uh, particular cone or strob so depends upon think that this is the uh, female cone okay think like this is the female cone this is the female cone then what happens this contain a leaf like structures throughout that that leaf like structure is called as megasporophyll mega means representing the female or larger uh, spore and spore means what a special kind of cell right phyll means leaf okay megasporophyll means it is present within that female strobili a leaf like structure is present that's called megasporophyll what is that megasporophyll contain then that megasporophyll is like this okay if i try to like this megasporophyll is like this and which contain a uh, spore containing structure spore containing structure inside that that is called as mega sporangia we already used the term sporangia right what is the meaning of sporangia spore containing structure what is the meaning of mega sporangia a female spore containing structure those mega sporangia contain mega spores okay you can simply think like this how i am writing it here once again okay i am writing it once again if think that there is the female cone is there okay female cone is there that female cone contain what that female cone cone contain mega sporophyll a leaf like structure okay leaf like structure what is that mega sporophyll contain then mega sporophyll contain mega sporangia okay mega sporangia that mega sporangia contain mega spore okay mega spore simply think like that okay uh, mega uh, don't think about that lipica that will be completely different okay mega spore mother cell will be the cell which gives rise to the mega spore we, we will uh, 
uh, learned it uh, yeah, later class. Okay, so when we are go for in detail, then we will learn that. Okay, yes, one minute. I'm changing this one. Uh, yes, symbiotic means what? The symbiotic means association or giving and taking kind of the association. You guys already know about this, right? Giving and taking kind of the association. That means. Uh, like in when fungi will give rise the certain things and algae will give rise the certain things. That's called symbiotic association. Okay, so I'm writing it here. It deleted. Okay, uh, I will write for another one thing. Like uh, I'll write for the male cone. Male cone contain what? Male cone contain microsporophyll. Microsporophyll and which again contain microsporangia. Same like our anther. Okay, sporangia, and it again contain microspore. It again contain the microspore. Okay, yes, same order. Male cone contain microsporophyll. Microsporophyll contain microsporangia. Microsporangia contain microspores. Hundreds of microspores. But when you go to the mega uh, female cone, female cone contain megasporophyll. Megasporophyll contain megasporangia, which again contain the megaspores. Okay, so what is the importance? These things also have another contain called mucilus. Mucilus is act like the nutritional tissue for the developing embryo. Okay, nutritional tissue. So remember, N for mucilus, N for the nutritional. Okay, when you come to the uh, higher plants like angiosperms, there is endosperm is present, which is giving nutrition. Okay, but that is not in the syllabus for plant kingdom for this year. I will explain in the this class in the Avanti class. Okay. But when in the uh, this particular structure, when in the this particular gymnosperms, uh, nucleus will be present, which is nutritional tissue. Okay, this is deployed in nature. Ha, huh, it's also act as the protecting envelope. Correct. And here endosperm is present. Okay, endosperm is present. That endosperm will act, do not act like the nutritional tissue. Because it's haploid in nature. Several times they only asked about the the ploidy number or chromosome number of the endosperm or of the gymnosperm. Okay, remember endosperm of the gymnosperm is haploid in nature. Always remember endosperm of the gymnosperm is haploid in nature. But when you go to the endosperm of the angiosperm, it will be triploid. Three set of chromosomes will be there. That will be different. Don't uh, tension about. Don't take tension about it. But remember here, endosperm of the uh, this one, uh, gymnosperm are haploid in nature. That is important. Okay. So then, how the life cycle is happening? So mature sporophyte is here. Okay, mature sporophyte is here, which is giving rise to a cone, and either it may be male cone or it may be a female cone. Okay. Male cone giving the microsporangium, which contain meiosis. Doing the meiosis produces the pollen grains. We can call it as the winged pollen grains because it contain wings. Okay, but here it will give rise to the megasporophyll. Okay, in the part megaspores within that megasporophyll. Okay, when both of them fuse, they will give rise to embryo and it uh, give rise to the particular seed that also contain the wing. For this particular Thing to happen, it takes more than one year. Okay, more than one year it will take place for all this process to happen, from production of that particular cone to the fertilization and production of the seeds. Okay, so this also kind of important. Okay, uh, and another one thing I just want to mention here is some of the organisms here are bisexual. Like if I take a cycas, what happens? Male and female are present in different plants. Okay, male and female are different plants. But when I consider the pinus as the example, when I consider the pinus as the example, male and female cones are produced in a single plant. Remember this one. Okay, you can also use the term monoecious and asexual, or you can also use the term unisexual and bisexual. All are okay, but remember, cycas is male and female, two different plants. In pinus, male and female, single plant, but different cones. Okay, remember that. Yes, angiosperms are deleted, so nobody will ask you about this. When we come to the regular class, neat class, then we will explain it. Okay, 
so then they are asking what are the different types of life cycle where it present or which kind of organisms it is present okay so when we talk about different kinds first comes will be haplontic life cycle when haplontic ask you think about haplo what you, you got anything haplo means what haploid you already know right haploid means what gen where it is present it is present in the gametophyte we know all these things you can link all these things right so what they are saying gametophytic phase is covering most of its life cycle and this sporophytic phase contain very less of that life cycle or simply i can say haplontic means haploid will be more haploid life cycle will be more that means gametophytic phase will be more okay where it is present it is present in the algae okay which is present in the algae so second one diplontic what is diplo yes diplo you can think about the diploid what is the meaning of diploid diploid means 2n where it is present diploid is present in the sporophyte we already told all this right so here you can simply think like diplontic life cycle means sporophyte is more sporophytic life cycle is more that means 2n will be more and gametophytic will be very less you can see the diagram right where it is present then it is present in the angiosperms angiosperms means all the flowering plants and also the gymnosperms that means higher organisms okay okay algae haplontic happened angiosperm and gymnosperm diplontic happened what about the in between bryophyte and pteridophyte yes in bryophyte and pteridophyte it will be haplo diplontic okay it will be haplo diplontic what is the meaning of haplo diplontic then haplo is also there diplo is also there that means n is also there plus 2 in also there that means all of them almost in equal condition gametophytic and sporophytic phase it's in a almost equal almost equal category okay where it is present it is present in the bryophytes okay bryophyte and also in the pteridophyte okay it's also in the pteridophyte remember even though that may be in bryophyte gametophyte is dominant yes in pteridophyte sporophyte is dominant yes but when you consider the life cycle they have the almost equal equal lifetime okay equal equal time of spending within that life cycle that's why bryophyte and pteridophyte kept in the haplodiplontic okay so these are the things and examples one question came try to answer the question okay so the question is mango plants follow haplontic life cycle diplontic life cycle haplodiplontic life cycle haplo diplo haplontic life cycle i'm launching the poll now okay you can answer in the poll so one of the easy questions right really lipika really yes so you can think then only you can answer don't rush okay we don't have any problems right choose haplontic diplontic or haplodiplontic or haplodiplo haplontic yes lipika any more answers others also yep how many seconds left still you guys have 20 seconds ha ah, right 65% people sorted guys quick quick yes i'm ending the poll now and i'm sharing the results 13% is an option a 46% b 15% c and 3% d first question i am asking okay mango is angiosperm gymnosperm bryophyte or pteridophyte which kind of plant it is mango which kind it is angiosperm correct right it's a angiosperm when you think about angiosperms you can directly go like correct sort of right it's a diplontic life cycle so it's not haplontic haplodiplontic i don't know who chose the haplodiplo haplontic okay i simply created one i even i don't know nobody know what that life cycle is okay you guys still choose that one <laughs> right so mango is angiosperm it's a diplontic life cycle plant okay next will be the animal kingdom but the issue is we have less time but we will go for the several simple things okay the question came the question is animal kingdom is classified based on symmetry embryonic layer coelom all of the above i am launching the poll again so you can answer quickly within the 30 seconds so animal kingdom is based on what animal kingdom classification 
is it based on symmetry or is it based on embryonic layer or is it based on coelom or is it based on all of the above okay yes third second questions still 15 question 15 seconds left you can answer quickly hi ashwini hi surabhi hi impana correct lipika right so you guys are correct as yes. oh yep yeah. i'm ending the poll now yes i'm ending the poll and i'm sharing the result 6% choose an option a 3% b 3% c and 89% b stop sharing the result correct right animal kingdom is based on symmetry also embryonic layer also coelom also so correct answer is all of the above that means option d is correct okay so they are asking the same question what are the basis of classification in animal kingdom okay so what is the basis first basis is the level of organization how it is present it may be cellular right what is the after the cellular cellular means aggregation of pulse cells what is later to the cellular can anybody answer what is the later to cellular yes it may be tissue by the aggregation of similar cells yes after this yes samanth it may be organ right or later it may be organ system like our digestive system respiratory system all those things right so it starts from the cellular kind of nature from the periphery and it will end up with the mammals which having the organ system kind of the organization okay when depending upon the digestive system we also make two different kinds okay depending upon the digestive system what are the digestive system may be incomplete yes it correct right because it may be complete what is the meaning of incomplete it have only one hole that means only mouth is present which act as both mouth and anus right but some of the higher organism contain two structures one will be mouth and another one will be anus okay so one from one food will go in from one waste material will be sent out right so depending upon the blood circulation we again make two different kinds that will be how one will be a uh, complete or you can simply say like you can uh, ha you can say like complete and another one is the what is the another one kinds of the depending upon the how the circulation system is happening correct complete or op, sorry closed and another one is the open type what happen this in the closed system it contain the different kinds of the arteries and veins okay these help in the circulation of the blood throughout the body like us okay we have the veins we have the arteries all those things presence of artery and veins okay what happens in open there is no particular kind of blood the organs will be there and blood will be pouring from the all the sides and those organ will be collecting oxygen or the food material from the blood this is present in the lower kind of the organism okay and this is the level of organization what we are talking next one will be the symmetry when you come to the symmetry symmetry will be different first maybe there may be no symmetry right there may be no symmetry you can't cut in any plane what is symmetry then symmetry means we can make a equal piece when we cut through a certain things when you are passing through the central axis okay when you pass through a central axis if you can cut this in equal halves then you can see that the, that particular is actually a symmetrical but foriferra and some other organisms are not having any symmetry but when come to the nid area these are having radial symmetry that means whatever angle you are cut you can get the yeah, equal portions okay equal types but when you come to the higher organisms okay yes higher organ echinoderms and nid area yes but when come to the higher organisms there will be bilateral symmetry only you can make a equal halves using the lateral side only in the lateral side when you cut it will divide into two equal halves okay so apart from also there are some uh, symmetries there that's called radial symmetry which sorry pentaradial symmetry pentaradial symmetry only present in echinoderms okay echinoderms only contain the pentaradial symmetry okay so it will be simple like this right you can make five halves like this so that is what's about the uh, humans you are asking right humans you can't make the radial right you can't make the radial we are not asymmetric also we are actually bilateral sim animals okay bilateral animals okay what about biradial biradial not present in this syllabus okay that means cbsc 
Biradial is in between the or uh, uh, this one radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry, which is present in the uh, second one. Okay, tenophora. Where the, what happens? It will be like eight plates will be there, like this. Eight plates will be there, and two this kind of structures will be there. You can't say it's a radial because if you cut somewhere like this, it is not a radial. You can't see that this is bilateral because it looks a radial. So we made a little bit one by radial. Okay, don't take tension about this now. When we are going about in the Avanti, I will explain it once again. Okay, sir, heart one side is there. Then what happens? Look, all this symmetry is based on the outer morphology, not about internal organs. Okay, internal organs will be different. Liver will be one side, heart will be another side. All those things happens in the morphological character. How it happens? That's what we are talking. Okay, yes. Next one will be the embryonic layers. Embryonic layers means what are the layers which are developed in that particular stage we are talking. Okay, in the lower kinds of organisms, ectoderm will be present. Ecto means outer layers. Endoderm will be present, inner layers. But in between, there is another one, a fluid containing structure is called present. It is called as mesoglia. Okay, glia means a kind of. or uh, cells okay miso glia okay a liquid kind of thing okay so because this only have two layers what kind of layers these layers present in the blastocyst are developing stage we call it as the diploblast two kinds of the blastic layers okay but higher organisms in between this ectoderm and endoderm there's another one layer is present that's called mesoderm meso means in between right that organisms we call it as the triploblastic animals three kinds of layers are present okay so this is the basic difference you have to understand but mesoderm is very important because it is the one which is determine the coelom okay what is coelom then can anybody answer what is coelom what is coelom yes coelom means cavity right what happens in our coelomates ectoderm will be present mesoderm will be present endoderm will be present but the cavity will be present inside this or there is no particular cavity only digestive tract is present in here there is no cavity is present right there is no cavity is present that's called as the uh, acylomate there is no cavity is there ha huh? what is family in i okay but when you consider here in the eosinomates what's happening a ectoderm is present endoderm is present here in between it contain a cavity or called coelom and which is lined up with the mes mesoderm remember wherever we want to say it's a coelom it should be lined up with the mesoderm from the two sides from the outside and from the inside also okay like in humans in our what happened outside if you take abdominal outside your skin is there and inside your digestive tract is there in between a, a space is there right that space is filled with the mesoderm layers those are called as eosinomate but some organism is not like that okay they have a cavity like this they have the ectoderm correct they have the endoderm correct they have the mesoderm correct but there is a space is there okay but it is only surrounded by the mesoderm in one side but not from the other side then it there is a coelom or cavity is there but this is the not a true cavity or true coelom Let's call it as the pseudo coelom, which is present in the round worms. Okay, so coelom means a cavity which is present and which is lined up with the mesodermal cells. So, what is the use of them then? The mesoderm use ha huh, in some forms a pouch is also present. Okay, what is the use of the coelom? Coelom will differentiate your inside tracts or digestive tract, all the uh, what you can say systems. from that skin which help in the reduction of damaging okay it will reduce the damage it act like a, a kind of a cushion or air balloon okay that's the one one primary thing and another one primary thing is there is complexity will be reduced if it attach it to the outer skeleton then sorry outer skin then what happens whatever outer skin is receiving or the impact on all the things the internal organ also receiving right and it should be differentiated also internal organ to make all those things coelom will be created okay ha huh, sometime mesoderm may be present in pouches also like given in the textbook okay that's also correct 
we will have to complete some other more times but the thing is time is very less we will do another one thing if you have the uh, time in during that exam period if there is any space we can fill up in there okay so i we will try to complete the, this particular chapter in that time or i will upload the notes also you can read it there also okay i launched the nps you can answer the nps and after that you can go the out of the class or if you have any doubt you can ask within this particular portion but remember guys in this you have to remember about these things remember this is important this particular chart and this chart is there right this is important and this is also important the difference and this particular chart okay in all this this is very very important because when they will ask definitely one of the ex uh, sorry explanation for the or salient features of any one of these you just have to write this level of organization is cellular symmetry is many siloms absent writing this much is enough okay yeah you have the gap the other uh, side i know also yeah you have the lot of gap we will also try to do the things in that time also okay so try to read those things if you have any doubt you can post in the group so we can answer it okay for you guys you have the whatsapp and this youtube guys you have the telegram group groups you can share your questions in the telegram group from there we will try to solve that okay how segmentation is present in the uh, humans okay in segmentation we will make a two kind of the segmentation or metameric segmentation that means complete wall segmentation will be there okay but sometimes the segmentation is not that much of visible in higher animals we only do the segmentation in humans like head thorax and abdomen and remember only this portion this portion is body hands and legs are not come under the body because these are called as the appendages okay appendages will be different and body is different body is divided into only three head thorax and body and we can consider neck in between the head and the thorax okay thank you but uh, when i i didn't understand what is the meaning of family you send that one right yeah yes uh, some of you not changed your suffix please change it any more doubts thank you hi shwini you raised your hand you have any doubts yes okay guys we will meet in the next uh, class either it may be revision class or it may be complete class we will see what it is okay uh, all the best do well okay bye bye where you can find the notes uh, we will upload it in the drive then we will send you the link and uh, it will be happen today okay you can find it in your telegram links okay uh jyoti uh, like uh, we have the youtube lives only uh, so uh, you have the telegram group for dedicated for that only you can use that okay so we will share with you guys uh, the telegram group link you can join there so we can discuss it there a uh, lot okay thank you thank you bye bye